Hello. Good. Well, for you, afternoon, evening for me. How yeah. You <laughs> I'm good. I just woke up from a nap and I feel very refreshed. <sighs> Same here. It was like as soon as I got, I got off at two and I got home. And went straight to sleep and took a nap out of this piece, man. It's like, I be feeling old. I be like, damn, I'm getting old because I need naps now. Is it like that now? Because Oh, no. I've always been a toddler. I'm not sure I ever grew out of naps. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a toddler or an old man. It's just like, I be waiting to get home. Like, yeah, I got to take me a nap when I get to the house. And just... <laughs> yeah. It's my nap time. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that. and looking forward to the nap time too out this piece. I was like, damn. Oh, yeah. When I have to like stay up through my nap time, I kind of feel like, oh, man, guys, I don't know how it's going to go. I didn't get my nap today. Oh, yeah. Good night. Yeah, because I kind of need that refresher. So, oh, so I see that you'll be heading to Vegas next, I think, with this coming, where, where the hell is this? Yeah, these yeah, next like couple of yeah, in a week. Are you excited? Are you ready? What you got going on out there? <laughs> I am excited, and I'm never ready. <laughs> but, 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 but but when you get it from when that camera come on, you get you are ready though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm always I'm kind of a procrastinator, so like I pack mm -hmm. last minute. But I mean, I have like I have a lot of shoots to set up, and I got everything planned at this point, so it's all set. I'm very excited. Um, yeah, I think we have some really good stuff in the works. I don't want to say more than that, but yeah, I, I think you. good scenes to come. Well, well, we're gonna talk about the scenes that you have done since we last talked, Miss Sexy Lady. Oh, right yeah. after I do these wonderful particulars, okay. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge here on Anchor, the perfect app for anyone who's trying to start their own podcasting career. All you got to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and start podcasting today by getting yourself a profile. I'm your host, Kevin Alva, Southern Champ, a.k.a. the Poor Rap Star. Find all my links with one link, allmylinks.com backslash porn rap star. I'm here to tell you about three wonderful sponsors that love our podcast. The first one being the Facebook of the LS community, LSworld.com. Next up is one of the hottest adult magazines on the web as we can, as we speak, Eroticism Mag. So go to eroticismmagazine.com, get yourself a monthly subscription, get it mailed to your paperback, or look at it online digitally. And last but not least, Black Owned. For you content creators, new place to consume triple X content. And for you content creators, 90% profit. I'm talking about excitebunny.com. Also, we're a proud member of the GW District Black Podcasting Network. Plus, while you're there, you have the opportunity to buy products from over 500 Black-owned shops, boutiques, oh, yeah, Black-owned. And all you got to do is go to shopgwdistrict.com. Also, Check me out on skyhawkafterdarktv.com as well as the BGPLLC app. So with that being said, I'm going to let this sexy, big booty queen who looks so gorgeous with the glasses, I swear, <laughs> introduce herself. Hello? 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 Black Wall Street is now online, baby. That's right. Visit the GW District. Shop the very best in men's and women's apparel and accessories, home decor, office supplies, books, pantry items, and so much more. The GW District is a retail marketplace of black-owned products and media. We're both veteran and black-owned, and we're bringing you the best online shopping experience with products made by small businesses. Come and experience the GW District difference today at Shop gwdistrict.com that shop gwdistrict.com the gw district a retail marketplace of black owned products and media that's right that's right that's right hey can you hear me now yes i can finally hear i swear I, good good i actually got the particulars out the way so <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I ain't even gonna put a commercial right there. They're just gonna be like, what? What they just gonna come back? But anyway, <laughs> oh my god, I think you had probably the best tweet from the past week. What was um, that? And uh it was you in the picture, of course, showing that beautiful ass in the cowboy boots and the cowboy hat. You said never again should a wound carry d- carry or die from an unsafe abortion practice never again would should a wound carrier be forced to carry a child to term i live in washington my home is always open to women oh, thank that you. Is beautiful. i love i love that that brightened my damn day when i saw that plus the booty also of course you know and um of course everybody know i mean we i didn't talk about it on the podcast a whole lot i'm not gonna you know go too deep because i don't want to you know, bring everybody down or what have you, but who boy, this week was fucked up. It's in many ways, um, on that end. Because it was a lot that I talked to people about and people don't even realize, and I said this before, they need to change how the Supreme Court is picked. That's just my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> they need to be elected. It shouldn't be or, or there should be a limit of how many years these fuckers serve. It should not be a lifetime term. No. Should not be. No. And then I and then I look and see is there any way you can't even get them out of office. You oh, can't no. get them out of office. They got to die off or resign. They can do the most fucked up shit in the world, and you can't get rid of them. Yeah. So. No, it's 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 an old story. Um, you know our country. It's not our country. It's it's the whole world, you know. I like people like to complain about it. it's our country. Let's be real. Our country is pretty awesome. Um, yeah. In comparison, if you're looking globally, um, there's problems everywhere. They're big yeah. problems, and we need to to work together and just love each other and figure yeah. shit out. And also, I'm like, you know. I'm in the sex work industry. We all are. Um, yes. We don't really abide by a lot of, you know, the standards of society anyway. And mm-hmm. I know the government can tell us so much to do, but in the end, I still have a choice and I still have yes. my freedom, whether they want to put somebody in jail or not. I still have a, a choice and a right. Yeah. And I think, and I think if I, this is how I look at it. At the end of the day, <sighs> people go vote. That's all I'm gonna say. Now <laughs> <laughs> go vote. Because if you put people in office, that can kind of add anything that the Supreme Court will do. And that's just facts. Because that's what it's gonna take. And if these Republicans think that this didn't galvanize some people to go to that that voter booth these next two terms, think again, mm-hmm. people. So, with that, let's move on to something a little bit <laughs> more lighthearted. As I'm sitting here seeing Luke London just enjoying you titty fucking him. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And it, it just, I just love seeing you laugh and smile. You just, you just seem like you're the most happiest person on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I think I'm just like one of those people who giggles during sex too. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I love that. I love a woman that does that. You know, yeah. I. I I work with a female. When she comes, she laughs uncontrollably. And I love that <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that shit. Oh, my God. So what has been going on in the world of Luna Lark? What's been going on, daughter? So much. I've been pretty busy. Um, let's see. I went to all the Exoticas. Uh, I just had a couple fun things come out. So... Uh, mm-hmm. Blush Erotica, we just re- released something called The Lake House, which is like four girls and us got together at a lake house. It's all lesbian, mm-hmm. a ton of different scenes. So much fun with Princess Dandy, Eliza. Yes, I see. Day, <laughs> and um, Elle Bliss, who you probably mm-hmm. have not heard of, but she was amazing to work with. No doubt. Oh, so yeah. it's. Guess what? But- I just what? saw this. I knew that I had done this scene, but I didn't know it was going to be in virtual reality. And I saw that it came out. Okay, so I've been filming VR porn. Ooh. And it's finally out. So you can have a VR a POV blowjob by me. 
Mm. Yeah. Oh my God. So tell us about VR. How is it like to film VR? And like what type of equipment do they use and all that? Because I'm seeing a lot of companies starting to use the the um the VR technique. Yeah, so first off, it's so amazing and really cool if you've never tried it with the mm-hmm. Oculus. I tried it and I like just I giggled so hard. <laughs> 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 it's so much fun and you have like titties bouncing in your face. And if you're a woman, I feel like I have the experience of uh, being like, oh my god, I have a dick. This is what having a dick feels like. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I mean that we're pointing heading to it anyway. Um, yeah. The VR, because that's the the you might well say the untraveled frontier for us. Oh yeah, it's and only a matter of this, time. Yeah, because that's going to be interesting. I'm just waiting for them to ha- make the suit that you can feel it just oh, all yeah, over your right? body. You know, that's going to be crazy, yo. That would be that's- amazing. <laughs> so, so back to uh, Blush Erotica because they've been doing some big shit. Yeah, like, it's like they came out of nowhere and just been popping off. So, um, how fun was it? Because, like I said, this was nothing but girl on girl. So it was interesting. Like some of the scenes y'all had to come up with because you know you had no male talents involved in this. Correct, which was wonderful. I mean, I love male talent, but I also love pussy. <laughs> She said, I like pussy too, but go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) It was a super fun experience. We all got along along really well. And we like um, spent a three day weekend together filming um, Mm -hmm. and hanging out. Like we would wake up and eat breakfast together and play games and talk about what we were doing, what we were shooting, if we had ideas. So we all collabed on different ideas. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can't like wait to do another one another content house like that and then like make a series out of it it was it was really fun yeah because blush erotica they they're doing things different uh because you got the voiceovers the erotic poetry you know yeah it, it's way different because when we think about porn back in the day you used to have that cheesy ass music when they was fucking Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that music, but yeah, you ain't lying. It'd be like, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> it'd be like, they would just get Eddie out this piece. I'd be like, good, but um, but with them, it's kind of like with the voiceovers, it's a different, it's kind of different, you know. It, it, it speak to you know, porn with the voiceover and how it's a little bit different than just normal porn, and how it's probably even more sexier and probably even makes the scene pop even more. Yeah, the thing that I love about Blush Erotica is that when you're having a voiceover, you have like a storyline that you're going through, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the erotic fantasy of what's actually happening. It's not just a visual representation. You're stimulating your mind. But then also you have the opportunity to have Mm slow-mo and really get sensual and into um, a slower pace, which I like because you can have regular pace mixed with your slower pace. But I love the slow motion. Oh, my God. Like dripping yes. fucking. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yes. Because to me, like like I said, with me, I like pouring this little sensual. It's not. I, I love hardcore, too, but I really like the sensual one where it's more. It's, it's sexier. It's more sensual. You know, um, and it's it's more tantalizing. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, I'm seeing y'all, you and Miss Dandy kissing each other, and that shit, and they they slowing it down. That shit look hot as hell. Yes. You know, and also I see that with you, a lot of your shit is is sensual. Even with the stuff I was watching with you and Finney, it was like, yeah, y'all was going hard, but it was a sexiness about it. You know what I'm saying? Do, is that something you look to do in your videos? Is to kind of make it more sensual and sexy? Uh, yeah, I like how I base who I'm going to work with is literally if I'm like, if I think we're going to make a sensual hot scene, like if we have chemistry and we can fuck well and I want to fuck you and I know you want to fuck me, this is great because that's what's most important to me is that it looks that it looks and feels real that I don't have to act because I fucking love it. (laughs) 
Yes. And congratulations on another scene being released by Plumper Pass. I had the pleasure of looking at the uh, trailer. And yeah. um, that shit was hot. So so tell us about that shoot that you did with Plumper Pass. Oh, that was really fun. Um, so that is, we. I get super oiled up. Oh, my God. We were so oily. And his dick was so big. I, I, <laughs> I love huge dick, though. <laughs> like, yeah. I, the bigger the better great you can't i mean you could hurt me but no yeah the bigger the better so what yes no i was about to say that ass is oily but go ahead (laughs) (laughs) that thing shiny i love it but go ahead baby so we're so shiny and we fuck on this ottoman the fun part is there's a lot of me like writing you Mm -hmm. know reverse cowgirl but that that shit was hard work all oiled up on a tiny leather ottoman it's yeah, see. and sliding mm. so shoot so you know what's interesting i love ottomans and it's like whenever i went to a hotel i always wanted a hotel that had an ottoman because the different ways you can ride a dick using an ottoman is a beautiful thing yes you know, and I think it's a little bit easier on y'all a little bit more because y'all can control the ride more. Yeah. You know, it just so happened it was leather and you was oiled up. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But he's so strong and able to hold me and put me in different positions. So it was really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see you strong as shit. I can see the muscles. So who oh was the talent you worked with? Oh my God. <laughs> I don't remember his name. That's terrible of me. It's John. It's Johnny. Somebody, I think okay. it starts with an R. But I had never met him before. This was my first time working with him. He's so goddamn beautiful too. Like he's so stunning, and he's a personal trainer. And we talked about fitness, and his body is insane. Yeah, I could. Oh, I could tell he's he he stays in shape for sure. <laughs> so. <laughs> So now, when you work with Plumber Pass, nine out of ten, you don't meet the male talent or know the male talent ahead of time, unless you had worked with them previously, or what have you. So tell us, how do you move differently when it comes to doing a paid shoot versus that of your own content? When it comes to male talent, how you interact with them, especially if you never met him. Yeah. So, well, I always request to know who the person is beforehand, um, and I have an agreement. You know that sometimes. Sometimes there's there can be an issue if you know who the person is and then people can meet up beforehand, which could like potentially fuck up your shoot or you know sorry my dogs are playing. <laughs> That's all good. I got me a dog too. <laughs> <laughs> so um I have an agreement that you know I won't meet up with anyone beforehand if, if we have a planned page shoot. But I do want to know who they are. I want to like be able to say hi. I want to look at their profile and the work and know a little bit about them. So you just have a vibe and a feeling for them. Um, and then when we meet, we like to say, hey, you really got to get flirty beforehand. Yeah. You know, like, and I'm, I know not everyone's into this, but I'm totally down for a little, you know, pre fucking to get in the mood. I got, I got no issue with it. Because to me, you are about to fuck anyway, so why not, you know, t- test it out a little bit, you know? And plus, yeah. when y'all shoot, when you're doing the BJ, you know, the BJ part of like a tr- of, of a photo shoot, yeah. you're kind of breaking the ice anyway, and it kind of helps to break the ice. Exactly. You know? And I want um, people to put their hands on me and like touch and feel and say sexy things to me. But that's just me too. I know that everybody's different, but that helps mm-hmm. me get in that mood a little bit more and feel comfortable with someone. Oh no, me, I was the dude that used to help them all up, get dressed. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> all that. <laughs> because one, because me being a producer also, I want to make sure that she looks, you know, don't want to be ashy on camera. And two, also when you it's kind of a way of flirting and also making her feel relaxed. Because if you own her up and you rubbing her down, she's seeing how you touch. Exactly. Plus it gives you a chance to see how she, you know, kind of get a feel for her, even though y'all not just fucking yet. And then like I said, no, nah, I got no it, it like I said before, it, we are already gonna be fucking anyway. So the only thing I suggest is that you don't fuck too hard to where you come because we want that first nut. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so even when like, you know, um when like 
like if the girl was like giving me head for like you know the, the you know for the BJ for the photo shoot, I try my dance. I'm like, look, don't go too hard for this right now because I don't want to come before we shoot. Because <laughs> <laughs> some of y'all females don't know how to scale back that put that blow job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even for the picture out this piece. <laughs> So, so how, I mean, how often have you worked with Plumper Pass? Um, every couple months, they seem to go down there. Maybe like every six months, or maybe a little bit less. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like it, you're becoming a you might well say Plumper Pass regular, and that's an honor in many ways because I remember from when they first started, it's sensational videos, and then when you know, you know, the owner it, it went became Plumper Pass or what have you, and everything. And I seen that growth to where you know there was mid level to now they're, they're they're basically mainstream for the most part. So how it feels to be practically a mainstream porn star right now? Oh, I don't know. Am I am I a mainstream porn star? I just never think it, of myself like that. You, you shot with a mainstream company, actually two mainstream companies, because you might well say Blush Erotica is a mainstream company. So technically, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Technically, you are because, like, people don't really think about it. What makes you mainstream is the companies you shoot with. If yeah. you're shooting with AVN established companies, that is as mainstream as you get. So, yes, you're a mainstream star. True that. True that. Yeah, but I mean, I've always felt really blessed that I started out with with such amazing companies. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it just kind of fell into my lap, and I, like, what a blessing. I love that, and I I love working with Plumper Pass, and I love working with Blush, and and I hope to do a lot more. Yes, because I'm sitting here seeing uh the, looking at the the girl on girl I think video that you did with Luna Luna Storm, the two Lunas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with um with Kendra Lee Ryan, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they just had a scene come out. For plumper pass and Kendra has fucked both me and Luna Storm. <laughs> oh my god! It's, so it's kind of like, are you the one that take the strap? Or uh, do y'all do a lot of strap on scenes, or do y'all do more of just the dildo scenes when you do your girl and girls? It depends. So Kendra has fucked me with a strap on for both plumper pass and blush erotica. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've also had plenty of scenes. Where we might not have a strap on, but we are using toys or we're just giving each other head. That's great too. But I yes. do, I do like a strap on situation. Yes, because I can tell the male talent loves you because uh, I was talking to uh, C St uh, Chris Cardio. Oh yeah. And as soon as I mentioned your name, right, I could hear the smile through the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love Chris too. <laughs> You know, period. and um, and two, I was kind of shocked because I see plumper pads. Did they let you wear your glasses in your scene? Okay, it seems uh, like that's your signature wearing the glasses. Yeah, sometimes they do. They like like half and half. So one mm -hmm. scene I'll have them on, and then the other I'll take them off. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure your fans love seeing you in the glasses though, because it's just like it gives that sexy librarian nerdy exactly. freak. Yeah, okay. and, and that girl next door kind of feel and stuff. Do you think that works? Do you think with you with the glass, do you think that works in your favor and helps your brand even more? Yes, especially. Because, I mean, not a lot of – there are some glasses-wearing people, but there's not a ton. And mm -hmm. um, I usually wear them in everything I do or most everything I do. Most definitely. And then I'm sitting here looking at you with uh, – I'm trying to see name – Eric Dickerson, and uh, I think it was uh, – I mean, he did a, a massage. I think he was supposed to be in a masseuse. And what I liked about the scene is that you used your foot and was rubbing his dick. <laughs> and and I always say it's the little things that you do in the scene that makes the scene pop even, even more. When you did it, was that something you just thought to do on the fly or was that something you planned? Uh, we planned that only because I was like, okay, you're going to give me a massage. How are we going to transition? Like, mm -hmm. I want to be the one who's like, you fuck me now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fuck me, massage boy. So yeah, because cause I, I kind of like that foot right there. Because it's kind of like you letting them know, yo, uh -huh. you got me. Goddamn, can we do this? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, because I think a lot of times people don't realize the thought process going into scenes. 
Yeah. And it, and the end game that you want with that. So like when when you walk into a scene, especially your own scenes, how much you think ahead of how the scene is going to turn out, or how you want it to turn out, as well as the ending. Oh my gosh! Sometimes uh, it's really well thought out, and then sometimes not at all. There, w- okay, there was a scene with Chris Cardio where we're both sitting down talking about, okay, what do we want to do this scene? What's our thought process? What's the intro? What's the outro? Uh, what positions? And then before we could like come up with a <laughs> with an intro, he's like kind of playing with his dick, and I was like, "Oh, let me just help you out there." Yeah, like just pull out your dick, and then I just started sucking his dick, and then Charles, who was filming, was like, "Just keep going," and <laughs> we just filmed, we just filmed, and then we fucked. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes when it's like y'all might have a scene planned out, but then you you do something off 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 what you didn't plan, uh-huh. and it works, and you just run with it. Exactly. You, know, you have to be able to go with those changes in the middle. Yes. So I'm gonna ask you this. Which do you enjoy more? Girl on girl or boy girl? Um honestly, I don't think that I enjoy one over the other. Mm. I really I, I like I struggle with my sexuality because of that. <laughs> Because yeah. I'm like, am I gay? Am I straight? Am I gay? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm you're gay. bisexual. I, I know. <laughs> but I'm like, one should be more than the other. It's not more than the other. How, but I mean, they're just different, right? It's mm-hmm. just different. Women's energies and bodies are different. I love the mm-hmm. softness of women. I love putting my face in a woman's ass so much. I love pussy. I love the taste of pussy. I love putting, oh my God, everything about pussy. I will eat pussy all day. Um, although your tongue gets really tired. No one talks yeah. about that. I believe it's a good tired, though. It's a good tired. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's a good tired. I'll get sore for that. That's not an issue. Uh, and then men, I also just like getting fucked. I mean, I love dick. It feels amazing. So. Oh, most definitely. I'm sorry. I just love watching you. Um, I'm w- looking at the trailer for the lunch spread. It, preach just working outside because people think that it's just easy to work outdoors. And it's not because, one, you got to pick the right time of day so you won't be too hot. You know, oh, yeah. period. And um, depending upon where you at, you're also worried about onlookers. So, of course, with with the cabin that, that y'all had, I'm pretty sure y'all was in a secluded area, what have you. Um, what was some of the difficulties y'all ran into? What was some difficulties y'all ran into with the outdoors? Cause I know it probably got hot or what have you. I don't know what time of the year did y'all, you know, did it or what have you. Okay, so there were positives and negatives. So when they rented the cabin, they thought it was more secluded than it was. And that was our biggest issue because people were right next door, but I don't think there were people in the houses, but we couldn't tell. And then like you're renting houses and you have to be careful of outdoor cameras. Yeah. Um, and then it was actually, the weather was totally okay. Uh, we were actually dealing with rain more than anything else. But we kind of figured it out. We put, like, some tarps up, right? So you mm-hmm. couldn't see certain parts. Um, however, we did have this thing. The lake house is right on the lake. And we had a fishing boat with a couple men drive by, stop, stare. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we just waved to them. And they waved. And we're like, we're going to stop until... Until you keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know they were like, hey, fuck this fishing. <laughs> that looks way better. <laughs> Is her face in her ass? <laughs> yeah, because I never forget when I was on a railroad track. And, um, oh, that we got hard. <laughs> man, we got halfway through the scene. I was, I just did the mountain, mountain her on the doggy style, you know, when the guy's like squatting over you or what have uh-huh. you. That's one thing I love doing with big booty BBWs. I'm sorry, the squat position. It feels you know, so good. Because you can catch that angle, the dick going down, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? That, that angle. And I just heard the train. You <laughs> never seen two people <laughs> butt ass naked, grab up everything and jump in the car and bounce, yo. And we finished back at the hotel, but I was like, damn, we were just about to get good. 
with doing an outdoor scene or what have you. And I've done outdoor scenes. I've done one in the park, um, which was crazy because it, the park we did it in, it was in my old neighborhood. And the park is in the middle of a whole bunch of houses, you know, period. And I caught it midday to where it could nobody see us, but we did like a 15 minute session and went back to the room and finished it up. So it's hard when you're trying to find a secluded outdoor spot, especially if you don't live in the country or nothing, to even do the type of shoes that you want or have the time that you need to really do them right. It's true. And I'm so excited because I thought I think I found a perfect place down the street from my house. It is Ooh. on a secluded beach. Someone has made a giant uh, driftwood fort. Mm. And I was like, we have to go in the fort. I, I was like, Luke London, we are fucking in that fort. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It like, to me, I'm going to tell you what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to do, it was his baseball field. I always wanted to fuck in the dugout. Oh, yeah. And, and shit. And it's one that's into cat skills, but now I'm retired. I can't even do it if I wanted to. <laughs> you know, but I think outdoor sex is is great because one, the sex itself is going to be more intense because y'all going to be really getting in and plus the thought of somebody possibly catching you is actually a turn on. Yeah. Until you actually get caught, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't, sometimes it's not so bad when people catch you, though. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you someone like probably me and you love being watched any damn way. So it'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, continue to watch. Yeah. <laughs> We're not stopping. <laughs> 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 so so tell us about the exotica in Chicago, because I think that's the exotica that you went to. How how much fun was it for you? It was great fun. Um I had Princess Dandy was my roommate and we were hanging out with Blush Erotica. It mm. was amazing. We worked our asses off we worked a lot and uh, i did the bbw fashion show with all the girls i hung out with spooky fat brat crystal blue ruby booby all the girls <laughs> we had oh, a lot that... of fun so um yeah because i had recently uh platinum pussy shout out to the queen oh, she yeah. was on um causing havoc which you know what i'm saying which if y'all listen to this now, y'all need to go to the Premium Smoke Room and check out that episode. It's fire. And um, tell us about how it feels to be in that fashion show, you know, especially an all BBW one, because these, there's no skinny girls on this. No, I love it. I love hanging out with the BBW crowd when we're all together. We have mm -hmm. so much fun. It's... <laughs> It's funny. I wonder what people think what happens like behind the scenes of what we do together. They probably think it's some big sex fest. But honestly, mm. like we're talking about like, show me your tits. You got your tits done. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you love vomiting on dick. Tell me how you do that. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I hate that I actually left the game before that became a thing because that's something I wanted to do during yeah. my, my my time. But no girl had the balls to do it with me. And because they were like, I can't vomit on that day. Like, no, 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 no. You just drink a lot of water. You're not going to give me the chunk vomit. We want liquid vomit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. No girls had the balls to do that. Now, it, it, shit, these girls have the balls to do it. I'm like, man, you, you, you male town's having fun right now. God dang. I'm just Oh, my them. God. I like, I don't really have the balls to do it. <clears throat> I tried it once. This is the thing. I will naturally do it. I have a huge gag reflex, but I'm like, I'm still a little shy about it. But Emma Lilly, oh my gosh, she has the biggest tits ever. She's the biggest sweetheart. She loves vomiting on dicks. And so I asked her, Emma, how do you do this? Like, how do you do it? And she goes, oh, it's really easy. All you do is put the penis down your throat until you throw up. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So who so what all shoots did you did during the Desotica? And I always ask this question, how do you pick the number of shoots that you do versus to the point that you don't wear yourself out or tie yourself out? You know, and you'll be able to give your energy your best foot forward for each scene. Cause sometimes we can overextend ourselves. Yeah. So I have um 
a max of four shoots or four things per day. So, like, if I'm going to the expo, that's one thing that I'm doing. So, I can really only do two or three shoots besides the expo. So, I have I just know that about myself. If I go past four, I'm going to cry. <laughs> that's just what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I'm going to be really tired and cranky. You're going to have to hold me and hug me, tell me you love me, and then we can fuck. But... <laughs> So it's just better with four, four things in a day. Um, and then I choose it by like, who haven't I worked with? I got to work with Dorky Darian, which I was super excited about because we did a fun uh, sexy librarian scene, which I want to do more of. Um, I got to work with Alfonso, um, which was also really great. And I did a really fun fetish scene with Ruby, Spooky Fat Brat, and Princess Dandy. I did a bunch of scenes with Princess Dandy. What are what else did I do? Probably other things I'm not even thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> so shoot, so um as far as the uh the Izaki itself, what all did you did within the convention itself? Was you at a booth? Uh, you know, uh what what happened with, with that? Yeah, so I started out each day at Carrie's booth, at Platinum Pussy's booth, um, and then we did the fashion show, and then we would go and kind of hang out at her booth, do some promo. Um, I did some pictures and some interviews and promo, walked around, but then I would also go and cam at Chatterbait every day, too. Mm, no doubt. So how did that work with the camera with Chatterbait? Um uh... Because, uh, because of course, if like, because if y'all camming, like, are y'all doing like actual shows, and is it closed off to where the fans can't really look? Because, uh, it, because I'm pretty sure y'all might get a little loose. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, there's security around who will slap you on the wrist if you do anything naughty. There are major rules. Um, so I was camming with Paisley Hayes one day, which Paisley is so that's cool. my girl. Yeah, <laughs> I love Paisley. Um. She we were, she was really fun to cam with too. So you can't show any genitalia, and you can't insert anything, and you cannot perform even uh, like pretend to perform a sexual act. So, however, this is the strange part: if you have a lollipop in the shape of a dick, you can suck it, mm. but you cannot suck a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that, that's the equivalent of, of something I saw in the movie when they said you can say you can say cock, you can say suck, but you can't say cocksucker what? on the uh <laughs> in the radio. And you're like, what? Okay, all right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so so um he said you work with Alfonso. Yeah. Alfonso Lays. Shouts out to the friend of the show, Alfonso Lays. How was it working with an AVN? Winner, because 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 he because one he's cool as shit. I love him to death. That's my homie, yo. And he's very opinionated, and he don't pull no punches. But also the fact that he actually won an AVN. How do you feel working with an award winner? I I don't know. <laughs> I like I like Alfonso. He's fun to work with. I think he didn't. Um, I don't think he was sure about me until I fucked him, and then he was like, oh. We could do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh huh. You do want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's like I like I was saying to somebody, it's like when you when you work with professional talent, it's a different level versus just the average, you know. Period. And when you deal with someone like Alfonso, that's like at the highest level. And I always say this, like, with, with you, I know your hit list. I call it the hit list of the girls and guys that ladies work with. <laughs> Yours is the who's who's of the business. You know, oh, period. Yeah. And, you know, had you ever sat back and thought about all that you worked with and all that you had accomplished so far in the business? And does it not kind of amaze you and blow your mind that, you know, you came so far and quickly? No, I'm kind of of the mindset of, like, <laughs> I'm trying to work on it, but it also I have this thing inside of me that's like it's never enough. I haven't done enough. <laughs> I need to do more. I need to be, you know. 
that like thing yeah. that pushes you. But I also just, I just want to be grateful for what I have done. I did do a lot this past year. I went hard, right? I like got in the business hard in a year. I did do a lot. <laughs> yes, you did. It, it, it was like, because cause sometimes, because I follow a lot of people, and then I see a girl pop up, and then all of a sudden, it was like with you, as soon as it, it's kind of like when you see like a car for the first time, and then after you see that now, or even better, when you buy a car, you think nobody else got it, and then as soon as you buy the car now, everybody got it. Uh huh. I see it. Yeah, it was with you. It was like I saw a video of you, and then the next thing you know, you were just popping up like hotcakes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I realized that I was like, okay, so like last January, I had I think I had three hundred Twitter followers, mm. and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> because, yeah it's funny she had 300 now hold on wait a let's see where you at now hold on i'm about to go look right now we about to go look right right now i don't even think it's that many though i'm like mm, it needs to be more well i'm pretty sure you're gonna get more that day i can't even shit every time i get to like close to 3,000, my shit get taken down like you had 24 you had 24 Point five k. You're like when I get to like two thousand, my shit get taken down quick. You know. I wonder why. Why do people's stuff get taken down? Like I will, I try to read the rules and like put all my content as sensitive and eighteen plus. Mm. But who knows? I I think it's more of a what I call a cleansing. Like every year they go through and just go through just randomly and shut people shit down because one. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Twitter is basically porn social media, damn near. Yes. You know, period. You, have, you probably have more sex workers using it than that or anything else. And I think they call themselves trying to clean it up because all these companies want to be public traded. Now, I don't know if Twitter is a public traded company, but I think that's one of the things that OnlyFans is so aspiring to try to do. You know, and which I think is fool's gold because when you're public traded, now you got to deal with certain regulations and restrictions that may hurt you in the long run anyway. Exactly. And I don't understand why people don't just want to come over on this side and be like, yeah, we're sex worker friendly. Yeah, because it's more money in it than any other thing. Because I'm pretty sure, because I it's funny as hell, like when I think about Patreon, Patreon don't make as much money as OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, right, and because they're not selling sex, <laughs> yeah, basically. And only fans, because we never saw a news story saying that Patreon made a billion dollars, they ain't never made a billion, but mighty fucking funny, only fans did, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So they ought to tell them something, but I think these, these cats, these men, probably nine out of ten white. Uh, they are so wanting to be on Wall Street. You know, it's kind of, I don't know if it's because they think it's more money or they think it's the prestige, but is it worth it? Because you ask, because a lot of companies sometimes when they go public, lose money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Just Y'all just want to keep fighting us sex workers. I swear, y'all just want to keep bothering us. Just want to let us make our money in peace. And fucking peace. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I kind of wondered, like, back in the day, before the internet, before social media, when I say back in the day, I don't mean, like, in the 90s. I mean, like, in the 1890s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where... <laughs> No, she didn't say the 1890s. God dang. They didn't make the people didn't even go ahead. <laughs> no, way back in the day. <laughs> well, I think about, okay. If if there were brothels, like they it was illegal and they did have workarounds and they did get in trouble, but at some point it's just kind of part of society. Like they know it's happening. And I'm guessing at that point, like in the in the gold mine days, it's just kind of necessary. You have all those dudes in one place all lonely. There needs to be a brothel. So were they yeah. bothered as much or less or the same? 
actually less if you think about it. If you want to be honest, y'all was a part of society. Y'all was like, how can I put this? Like one of my favorite shows, which I hate they stopped, which was Harlots. It was on Hulu. And it was about the English brothels back in the day. Ooh. Back during colonial times. And you had the hood brothel and you had the fancy brothel that was beefing and what have you. And they had a book, you know, which used to rank the top escorts, the top, you know, prostitutes, what have you. Oh, you know, okay. you had, you know, you know, you had the rich men that had their little side chick. And the it was funny because like the main guy that 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 had a girl, his wife told the girl, like, look, I don't want to fuck him. You can fuck him all day. But don't go to the dentist with the motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he brought it to a damn dinner, a society dinner. They looked at him like he was crazy. But no, women in brothels was considered as important as the gunslingers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They were considered as important as the government officials because, you know, y'all was a part, a major part of society. It wasn't until, I think, the 1930s when the mafia got kind of involved in the prostitution ring of things, that's when they decided they wanted to fuck with y'all to a certain extent. But even to the point that it, at no time did I ever think the conversation came up to make prostitution legal. You know, yeah. period. But they didn't worry about it because, like I said, y'all was considered an important part of society. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because think about it. That was the one place where the gunslingers couldn't bring the guns. And they damn sure weren't thinking about shooting each other. <laughs> right? Exactly. They were just having a good time. And uh, so I learned this interesting fact that there was a madam in Seattle um, named Lou Graham. She had she was super rich, made all this money. Seattle burnt down. The banks couldn't give everyone loans, didn't want to give everyone loans. She gave out everyone's loan. She like mm -hmm. rebuilt Seattle with her money and was so respected that everyone just left her alone. Like she was a huge part of Seattle and everyone respected her. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Because it's kind of like, to me, I think what it was that kind of like with the weed situation, the government officials was worried that girls might say who was coming to see them. And that's why they kept it illegal. You know, period. Which is funny. It's always the government officials that make everything unfun. Mm-hmm. God, what you did. What you, see what I mean? I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you fuckers. Because <laughs> even to the point that it was kind of like, I remember when Obama and them went down to, I think, Columbia and one of the secret service agents got in trouble because he had an escort. Wouldn't have got found out if he paid her. He tried not to pay her. What a dumbass. In Columbia. And forgot what? it was legal in Columbia. Oh, why would you do that? I, I I don't get that. It it I never understood that that you hit up a girl that you know this is what she does, and then you you sitting there trying to uh, ask for a discount. Or or you know, or you feel like you want to be Captain Saver Ho. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the best. <laughs> that is such a little funny. You know, you, why, why you don't need to do this? You're too beautiful. I can take care of you. If I wanted you to take care of me, motherfucker, I would. I want to take care of myself. <laughs> right? Oh my god, it's nonstop. I'll love you forever. You don't have to do this. Yeah, I know. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point. AKA choice. We choose to do this. It's not something we're made to do. And sometimes they're trying to make it seem like y'all ladies have no choice. Like, oh, your life is broken. Some of y'all ladies left corporate America to do this shit. Yeah. And, you know, period. Because, and making more money with this than you was in corporate America. Yep, absolutely. They don't pay us well in this country. No, they, they don't. They really don't. And it's, a, it's good work. Sex work is good work. And, you know, I, I am also privileged to be able to come at it from a place of I have options. You know, not everyone has options, and I would I want to respect that. But yes. also, a lot of us have options and choices, and this is our choice. And it's good work, and it's fun work, and we make good money. And we have good lives. And plus, on top of that, it's also body positive. 
you know, period. And it helps women's egos and their confidence, you know, period. Because I'm pretty sure there was ladies that walked to this game, especially on the BBW side, because I always ask this question. I said, did, did you think that BBW was popping like that? Because a lot of times, you know, if you're a big girl, you might get teased or what have you, or you may not even realize your sexiness. And I know it feels good when you put up a video, you put up a pic, you're getting likes, you're making money. I know it it does, it's food for the soul. Yeah. Uh, but there's also like a part of that where you always wonder if you were, if your boobs were bigger, if your stomach was flatter, would you be making more money? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people, the plastic surgery game is big and those girls make a lot of money. Yeah. So- With that being said, have you ever thought about bucking to the pressure of that and getting something? Yeah. Um, I don't think that I ever want to get something for someone else. If that makes mm-hmm. sense, like, it would so. really have to be for me. And when it comes down to it and I ask myself, I don't need to do anything, you know, maybe I'll get Botox eventually, but I don't need to change anything. And if anything, I think people should love my belly more if they want my flat belly. But and yeah, I like you just the way you are. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry, you sexy as fuck, boo. Fuck that. Thank you. (laughs) You don't need to change a goddamn thing. (laughs) Yeah, that was my thought. I was like, you know, in the end, that sounds painful. Mm. And and I don't want to get into the mindset of I need to change in order to be hot, sexy, perfect, yeah. whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I want to love myself. And I, I do this because I want to love myself and feel confident. I don't want to, like, buckle that pressure. Now, I know you look too young for this because I don't know your age or what have you. Because you look like you about, you know, early 30s. But um, I remember this singer named Vesta. And, um... She was a, B- a BBW, great singer. She had the song Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Because she know the song because her ex got married and she was saying congratulations to him. And she was a gorgeous big girl, yo. I mean, I remember seeing her uh, in this black, all black Western. And then she lost weight, right? I mean, mm-hmm. literally lost weight. And she didn't look as good. And the thing that I, I, I pose to BBWs, if you lose weight, do you worry that you will hurt your brand and lose fans? Um, I don't think about it very much, honestly, because I'm okay with my weight the way it is. I'm not trying to lose weight. But I also, if I wanted to lose weight, I, I just, like, have faith that it would be okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, if if my fans, if I'm losing fans because I lost weight, there will be other fans that come. Everything's gonna be just fine. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think what it is is if it's an abrupt change, it might hurt you. Versus if it's a casual change, you yeah. feel what I'm saying? You know, it, it's a difference between like. Shouts out to my my friend friend of the show, Khalees Sin. Like she did a BBL or what have you. Mm-hmm. But she wasn't that big. She just had. She didn't really have a belly, honestly. You know, she was more on the thick side of ever BBW. So her doing that, it didn't really change, but so much, but just enhanced the booty a little bit, just made her smaller. But she wasn't that big to begin with. Versus you take a female that's 250, 300, and she abruptly loses about damn near 200 pounds. Now she's 180. It's 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 a different it's a different element because now. You're literally, you're not giving your fans a gradual change. You gave them a on-spot change. And it might go negative, you know, period. Right. But then I, I also think um, that you should do what's right for your body no matter what. Yes. You know, so if you want to lose that weight and that's something that's important to you, then fuck it, you know? I'm like if that is an issue for fans, then that's an issue for fans. Do but do what's right for you. That's the most important yeah. above all else. So and and I'm gonna tell you what's fun. I'm gonna yeah. tell you what's fun about fans. They'll sit there. The ones that hate you the most are your biggest fans. <laughs> right. Straight up, the one it, straight up for real because they and you'd be surprised how many of them actually bought your shit. Like the ones that want to talk shit to you, they actually bought your shit. I'm like, oh, how yeah. you gonna talk shit to me? And you paid for it. Shut up. I don't know if I I have like one mm-hmm. hater 
I well, I block a lot of people too. Yeah, Maybe you block Gay Strong, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. One thing has happened. We're, we're blocked. <laughs> you don't same way. Right? You're blocked. I don't give a shit. <laughs> block came on fleet, goddamn. <laughs> I might have more because I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm not gonna go through that conversation with your ass. You say something stupid, you're blocked automatically. I'm like, you ain't even got to point it to me. If it sounds stupid, I'm gonna block you. Just yeah. just no. run across your shit, yo. I don't want to see that <laughs> bullshit. Be no, saying some stupid shit. Yeah. I, I like positive energy, baby. Girl, I love positive energy. Like the energy that you bring me every time we talk. Oh, thank oh, you. Uh, but shoot, but no, I mean, how tall are you? I'm little. I'm 5'2". Now, I know you heard this before. A lot of people probably think you're taller. Yeah, they probably do. And, like, if you ever see me next to the other girls, I'm like, why am I a midget? (laughs) Wait, do you know how tall Pinky is? She about 4'11". Okay, because I saw Pinky and I was like, that woman is a midget. And then Paisley grabs me and goes, you know that's how you look when you walk around. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'll never forget when I went to the Exotica in Miami and that was the only one I went inside I ain't go inside the one in New Jersey when I went and I saw Pinky as well as Cherokee and I'm thinking I knew Pinky was short but just with, but I thought Cherokee the ass was going to be tall oh hell no she she's short like Pinky I'm they sitting there like tiny they are yeah. like the the Thickest, tiniest munchkin <laughs> ass. It is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, Lord. I said, now I see why the motherfucker be picking your ass up. Shit, you short as hell. Uh, I'm thinking you five seven. You four foot. You four foot eleven. Shit. <laughs> oh my god. And then even with some of the male towns, some of the male towns are short. Yeah, and a lot of there. them. Yeah, cause I remember I saw Mr. Marcus. I thought Mr. Marcus was like six feet. That motherfucker shorter than me. Yeah. I'm like, damn. I'm right. like, <laughs> I'll be wondering, I'll be like, is is it prerequisite for male towns to be short? I'm like, but they ain't too many tall ones. <laughs> there isn't. I'm trying to think of who's really tall. Javon Jordan is tall. He's yeah, really I know tall. he is. Yeah, because because yeah. even when I and Richard Man, he pretty decently tall. I know he about about a good six foot one because I met him face to face. Shouts yeah. out to Richard Man and everything. Um, so what 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 male times have you not worked with that you've been watching that's on your hit list? Your wish Ooh. list. I have them lined up for Miami. <laughs> um, we, we, we ain't doing a gangbang while we down the years, we oh my god, I would like to do a gangbang actually. Um I also want to, I do want to work with Richard Mann for sure. I've been trying to work with him. I hope that it works out one day. Um, that's a big one. Okay. I don't know how to say his name. Bosch? Mm-hmm. Do you know this person? No, man. Okay. He, I want to work with him. I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I hope that that's going to happen in Miami for sure. Um, who else? Mazzy the goat, I want to work with. Um, who else? Those are like my top ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I know about Mazzy the goat. I've, I've been seeing him and stuff, and everything. So, what is it about these talents that make you want to work with them? Oh wait, you know who I really want to work with, but I don't know if he works with BBWs. Mm. It's Troy Fr- Francisco. Mm. He might. About- I you know, know him. No, I don't know him personally. I know of him. But yeah. girls be surprised how many of those guys would work with a BBW, but because you don't see them with BBWs, it's kind of like, for example, you take a, a black male talent and you see him with a lot of white girls. And the first thing girls automatically assume is that that's all he want to work with, but it's not that he want to work with him. That's all they want to work with him. Uh-huh. You know, period. Just like I never forget when... um when I have tried to work with smaller chicks, because my 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 bread and butter was women like you, BBWs, you know. Uh-huh. Period. And I'm here to tell y'all, BBWs make money, and them scenes sell, and the DVDs sold, you know. Period. And um, when I hit up the skinny girl, she looked at my page and was like, "Do I fit what you looking for? Do I fit what you want?" I'm like, 
I'm hitting you up, ain't I? <laughs> yeah. So do you find yourself because I I it, because you do girls and you do guys. Now I also see that you also do any races. Have you, have you ran into any situation where someone thought that you did more black guys than white guys and vice versa? Oh my god, constantly. Everyone okay. This this thing happened the other day and I was like, What what is with you guys? <laughs> A lot of the time people are like, Why don't you don't fuck uh white men? You only fuck black men. And I was like, well, that's just what's happened on camera. I have, some, I have no issue with anyone. I like everyone and I will fuck them all. It just happens. <laughs> that these are the people that I've worked with. Mm-hmm. And then I fuck like one white guy. I fuck one white guy. And then I get, I get a message of being like, oh, you don't like black guys anymore? <laughs> and I knew it. And I was like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? <laughs> I, it, it's like you can't win but lose it because it was like w- w- a friend of the show she tweeted about that and it's <laughs> like it, you can't win it's like okay yeah I fuck black dudes I can't help that black dudes love my booty you know and there's some sex ass black men coming at me and then when you shoot with a white dude the black motherfucker come back oh you don't like us no more it's just one white dude <laughs> <laughs> And if it was three, <laughs> do you see my page? <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity fucker. Know, like... I'm the Rainbow Coalition by myself. <laughs> Why aren't there more Asian male porn stars? That is a good question because I had this conversation with my man. Shots out to Trike Patrol. Um, they 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 the kings of Philippine porn, Ooh. and we talked about that that. Your interracial is white women with black men, mm-hmm. which is the, the the money, what have you. But you don't see a lot of Hispanic with black men. And I mean you see it, but it's not pushed. And you don't see really any Asians with with black. Like at the most, you might see um, especially with the the, the, the the Asian stars, especially the Asian guys, they'll work with a lot of the smaller girls. You know, but I don't see him with the BBWs as much. Yeah. You know, but actually, I don't know, but I only met one Asian porn star, and that was uh, Asian descent porn star, male talent wise, David Lee. You know, I even <laughs> asked him, I said, Would you work with BBW? He said, Yeah, I got no issue with it. He was like, They just don't ever hit me up. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to start hitting up everybody who works with small people. <laughs> not even fucking care. I also thought about that with Indian people. They're like, There's no Indian male porn stars. Now that is true. There's Indian women, but not Indian men. And it, do you think maybe because they don't feel that their dick is adequate? I don't know. Because I'm pretty sure there's some Indian men that's packing some goddamn meat. Oh yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I think that people say that like penis size has anything to do with your race. It does not. No. I've seen small and big dicks on people you would never have imagined. The tallest blackest man with the smallest dick down to the skinniest shortest white man with the biggest dick almost it definitely matter so i'm like you know there's some indian guys with huge dicks mm-hmm. i do kind of wonder about like culturally is that a thing they're okay with yeah i mean from talking to like some of the indian stars not it's not as it's not as accepted um, for someone to do porn per se, especially Indian and even Arabic, yeah, you know, so Middle Eastern, it's it's not really that 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 will accept it. That's why you don't see a lot of them, yeah, you know. You know? And um, which is crazy because I would think more of the Americanized ones would be breaking to porn. I wouldn't expect the ones that are coming from the mother country. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, and I know they freaked. I mean, hell, y'all came with Kama Sutra. Yeah. Right? <laughs> How and the I, fuck y'all not important? Y'all came up with all the positions. Get oh the my fuck God. Can you imagine? I want to see Indian porn now because they have Bollywood. They might make yes. the most amazing porn. I saw one a long time ago. <gasps> and man, they went. They went in. They went in. It was it was hot. It was just like Bollywood being with just porn. They even had to sing it in it. Yes. <laughs> And I'm a Bollywood fan. Don't get it twisted. Oh, I love Bollywood. I'm sorry. They, the dance room teens, the colors. Oh, it's just beautiful, man. I, I always wanted to go over there just to see, just to see the country. 
Yeah, me too. Oh my god. It okay, now just... I'm looking up Indian porn. I'm Googling it. There's only women. I only see women. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like the women, yeah, but like I said, it's kind of like the men don't do it, and I would think you would have at least one or two men. Right? You know, you know, period, because it's kind of crazy. It's like, because even with, uh, when I would talk to my man Tripe Patrol, a lot of their, their male talents, uh, they have very few Filipino male talents. It's like American male talents that go over there to do, to do the scenes. Very few Filipino guys or what have you. Um, and or 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 if it's Filipino, it's somebody that's filming it themselves and submits it. You know, period. <laughs> and um it's like listening to how you know porn is in Mexico, porn in the Philippines, where it's like, you know, it's just interesting to see how porn is treated in different parts of the world. Yes. You know, period. You know, because even to the point where uh, like when I talked to my man, shouts out to our sponsor. Arise is a magazine. He does a lot of his work in Mexico. And he talks about how it's not the girl want to do the porn, it's the boyfriend that pushes her to do the porn. Yeah. And he'll find some girls that are great, but they don't stay in it long because they was pushed by their boyfriend versus them wanting to do it themselves. And I was like, damn, I would think, you know, being in Mexico, you would probably find more girls that'd be willing to do it, especially for the ass to get the fuck out of Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, a Venezuela or what have you, you know. But it's just interesting how porn is around the world, you know, and and some of the point, even to the point of like I remember when I was researching, there's certain things, there's certain things uh in certain countries they don't even allow when it comes to porn. Like in India, they don't they try not to show penetration. Um, some countries they won't even show the the dude coming. You know, they show everything they... else but to come. Yeah, there's Asian porn where they like blur out pubes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, why you blew out what? That's what we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's blurry. <laughs> I'm like, she giving them head, he just blurry. Like, why would you just like I don't know, pretend, <clears throat> I don't even know. I was like, why not show it, not show it, and then you don't have to blur it. Yeah, because that's one thing I can say about like with Playboy and I mean, I don't know how old you are, but when they had, you know, Cinemax After Dark, yeah, with, 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 with them soft, with you can't even saw a soft coin point. It was X rated. The only why it wasn't triple X because you you didn't see the penetration. But I always wondered why Playboy never showed the penetration until I got in porn myself and and saw why, because they wanted they stuff to be in every continent, and for them to do that, there's certain things they had to cut out. Yeah. You know, period. So, which made me wonder: Was the girl really sucking his dick when they was filming? Was no. they really fucking? No. Was he just hunching her from the back? <laughs> yeah. Like you, they have to, right? Yeah. Like if you're, because I don't know. I couldn't do that, man. I have to. I had to penetrate. I can't. I can't bump. I can't bump you, and that my dick is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hard! I'm just hunching you. Just oh, hey, no penetration with it. And she's up there faking it, ah, uh, ah, uh, with no feeling. I'm no, I can't do that. I'm like, no, we had to do it for real. You just had to cut out the parts where the dick is in the pussy, sir. It would be you're not fucking up my shit. It would be real acting. Yeah, because um, is is I think I think that's what actually I think Trey because I think. Because I'm wondering back in the day, was they really, was it acting? Were they really, really fucking that? The girls said they really was fucking. But with some of the screaming they were doing, it was over the top. I, it made me wonder. Okay, when you say back in the day, when are you talking about that? Like, I used to watch 80s porn. We talking about not, the 90s porn was different because that's when they, they, they got down. You know but what I'm you saying? Know, did you ever watch, uh, was it Loveless? No, I know you're talking about. Who like oh god I don't even remember what the, it was like one of the first pornos uh, where she gives yeah. amazing head and they really fuck deep and throat it's like, yeah it's deep deep throat, throat. It's classy so good. oh my gosh I mean, that was so, one of my favorite movies the seventies had some good porn and the storyline was interesting because she had a the storyline was she had a pussy in her throat. <laughs> 
that was the storyline. That's why they said deep throat. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. and and it was like that when dudes were giving getting head, it was like they was fucking the pussy because they, they you know they supposed that was she had in her throat, and that's how she orgasmed. You know, period. One of my other favorite ones was Debbie did Dallas. That oh, shit yeah. was fun. I used to love that. And behind the green door was classic. Okay, so back in the day when you could rip stuff off the internet and burn it onto a CD or a DVD, I did that for all of those porn because I'd never seen them and I wanted to watch them. And Mm -hmm. so I watched them all and I was like, I don't know, 17? (laughs) 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 And I remember studying how she gave head and was like, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. (laughs) She was one of the best head givers her. I can say Jenna Jameson was a beast, and what was the other girl? God, I can't think of somebody. It was it, I had to had the girl on the tip of my tongue. Um, Superhead, of course, you know. Because I remember watching the video that she did with um, Mr. Marcus, and that was the first time I saw Mr. Marcus literally stop a girl from giving him head because he was like, "I don't want to come that fast," and I was like, "Damn." You know, period. So, what 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 did you learn from Lovelace about her technique that helped okay. your BJ skills? Because your BJ skills are insane. Oh, I feel like I can never really get fully into it on film. Sometimes I can, like if it's just like a point of view. Um, mm-hmm. But like in professional shoots, you have to be like sideways and do it in kind of funky ways. And I feel like it looks good, but it's not my full potential. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like she was doing this thing that you like focus on the head. I do it like a 10 to one second, right? You mm-hmm. focus on the head for 10 seconds and then you go deep, like in one swallow for one second and then come back mm-hmm. up to the head and then go deep. <laughs> Just Very do that uh, for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, I need to smoke a cigarette after that. <laughs> <laughs> God damn! Just off the words alone, God damn, that's sexy. <laughs> yeah, because to me, it 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 it's kind of like I like a female that because it, it's something that you say you say that it's a blowjob can ever be too sloppy. Never, never. There's no such thing as a over sloppily boat. No, the sloppier the better. The nastier the weather. You know, I, I it, me myself as a talent. As a man first, but as a talent second and a producer third, I wanted a girl to be as nasty with that blow. I, in other words, I want her mouth so fucking wet that my pubic hairs look like it's a Jerry Curl juice. Yeah, like I want my spit dripping down your asshole by the end of it. Yes, want, and my all my titties and half my makeup is gone, and we just we well, just gave head nothing else yet. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah. Because even when, like, when I used to bring girls to work with me, the first scene we did was a blowjob scene. And they was like, why is that? I said two reasons. One, to break the ice. Two, to show off your BJ skills. You know, period. Because sometimes in the midst of a scene, you really can't get down with the BJ like you want versus if you're doing a straight-up blowjob scene that's completely by itself. Exactly. You know, period. Because then I'm working on different angles of the BJ, whether I'm laying up when I'm laying on the bed or standing up, or if she's off the bed with her head off the bed and, and, and I'm fucking her mouth or whatever, your face fucking different stuff like that, you know, period. Because like I said, because even with you know, you being prof- doing professional shooting as well as content shooting, with professional shooting, they're timing how long you're doing the BJ. You, you know, now to. When it comes to content, it really ain't, you ain't really timing anything, you know, period. Sometimes, even when I used to eat pussy, they, they, the cameraman had to sit, sit there and tap me on the shoulder, and I look back, and, you know, I just happened to p- pick up, hey, bro, look, you, you need to change position, maybe eating for like 10 minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I just get into it. I love eating pussy. I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. Omar, tell me your best pussy eating technique. Um... What I love to do is take the tip of my tongue and lick the clit real fast to where it feels like it's vibrating. Uh huh. And then lick the lips, the pussy lips, and then stick my tongue in deep as I come and just face fuck her with my tongue. And then when they cut, then the last stroke, pull out just enough and then go and lick the pussy, lick the clit. Mm hmm. And then, um, 
and also I I I I used to love you know spinning on the pussy, spinning on the click, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying, or spitting the pussy. Just I'm just a fool for eating pussy. I'm sorry. In love when a girl ride my face. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. She a big girl ride my face. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you need to make a song. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm it, because to me, I also I always loved doing 69. I thought that was a position that you should do in the scene. You know, period. Um, and that the cameraman, I used to make sure my cameraman catch her blunt, giving me head, and then he comes back and show me eating the pussy. And I'm sitting there, she laying on my face. I got the butt cheeks, and I'm just uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but to me, it, to me, I always wanted to eat first before she gave head. You know, um, now I didn't do that in every scene. I would have done it in every scene, but consciously I'm like, I can't do that in every scene. I can't starve every scene like that because I don't want to bore the fans. You know, period. But I always felt that if you start that off, that revs up her motor. Yeah. You know, period. Because not every girl gets turned on by a blowjob or gets wet. Yeah. You know, and two of you that pussy right, you think she sucked dick before. Imagine if you'd have made her fucking orgasm off your tongue and now she got to get on your dick. She's going to give you that payback. She's going to give you that receipt. Exactly. Exactly. It's so much easier to get into a lot faster. Yeah, you know, period. And also, I used to like kissing. You know, I couldn't stand somebody that couldn't kiss. I'm like, really? We are actors and actresses. Yeah, I can imagine Holly Berry telling the director, Mark Scorsese, I don't kiss. <laughs> really? And to, especially like if y'all supposed to be, because especially if y'all supposed to be playing like a husband and wife situation, girl, boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever, I think a kiss really makes the scene even more central. and actually makes the scene better. And to me, if you are a good kisser and you like being kissed, it also revs the engine even more for the scene. I love kissing. And I see you're a good kisser. Am I a good kisser? I guess so. Yeah, I can tell from from looking at the girl, the girl on girl videos. <laughs> the <two laughs> kisses was goddamn hot. I'm like, damn. How is she making me hard off a kiss? What the fuck? <laughs> I did a makeout video with Princess Dandy. That's pretty hot. Yeah, see, I'm sorry. There's nothing hot than two women making out. The touch it's and the kiss true. Here. And I'm so sorry you never get to experience what that's like as a woman making out with another woman, but it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. But let me tell you what don't look good. I don't care. And look, I'm not knocking gay men. Let's make this clear. But no, it's not as sexy as two women kissing. (laughs) Two women kissing is the best. (laughs) I'm sorry. I I can't. Two dudes with Magnum Magnum P.I. mustaches kissing each other. No. (laughs) <laughs> no and not because I'm a straight man because nah because I can sit there and watch like a woman with a trans a transgender I can watch a dude with a transgender I, I got no issue with that but I can't watch you know two dudes you know I just can't do that you know or see them kiss or what have you you know and, and, that, and, 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 no, and no shade you know but to me it's the beauty of two women you can't beat it with a stick you know, some you know, gay men would say it's not pretty at all to watch women make out. Well, shoot. Well, that because they're gay. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to watch y'all know it. But I'm going to tell you what's so funny about that. They don't want to see us jerk off. They want to see us fuck y'all. Yeah. And that's facts. Because it's, don't get true. I sold some solo videos, which I don't care nobody say. Our solos is way more difficult than y'all's because you know how hard it is to extend a a, a jerk off. It's it's, it's hard because right. it's well, how long how long are your jerk off videos? Like, do they have to be more than five minutes? I usually do about six six to seven minutes. Like, what I do is I jerk, then I stop and jerk it a certain way. Like, I like one of my fans told me they love the way well because I got a curved dick. They like when I take my hand. Instead of doing it the normal way, I turn my hand like a fist with the mm-hmm. knuckles pointing out and jerk it that way, going to the side with the curve. And okay. I might do a little dick dance or what have you, you know, make the dick jump or what have you, just to, to keep myself from coming, you know, and then go back to it, what have you. And it was funny because I had a uh, one of my fans, 
happened to be in the LBG. They said, we love you jerking off, but um, do more boy, girl, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked them, I said, well, why? I would think that y'all would want to see it. They'd be like, no, because we can't imagine you fucking us because we're not a hand. We want to imagine you in the, in the bussy. And yeah. the only way we can imagine that is we're watching Bob fuck Luna Lark. Or, you know what I'm saying? You know, period, because, yeah, you know, period. Just like with me, I like, even with a girl on girl, I like the strap on scenes. It's like, I don't mind the dildo scenes, but the strap on scenes just a totally different level to me. It, good because to I know. Like seeing, I like seeing a woman with big, big energy. <laughs> yeah. What is? What if someone had a strap on and they face fucked me? Ooh, that would be hot. I think that would be hot. I think that we're gonna write that on the list to do in Miami. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Because um, like one of my favorite porn stars that I see with a strap on, and sorry, she has big pinky. Yeah. Whew. She must have been a man in another life the way she worked that strap on. I like damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work. It truly yeah. is. Oh my god, it's really tiring to have a dick. How you? Good job, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and you're welcome. You're yeah, welcome. like it is hard work, and we 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 work you hard. Yeah, you, 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 I know you know the joke. They say it's a hard life being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> got two nuts. Got two nuts for neighbors. <laughs> a yeah. pussy for your best friend. <laughs> Every time you get excited, you vomit. So there you go. <laughs> hard as a dick. <laughs> That's one of my favorite jokes of all time when I first heard that when I was a teenager. I said, damn, that's a good joke, though. So, oh, I didn't held you on here for an hour. And, yo, I got to bring you back. And hopefully next time I get you on camera so we can see that pretty face, that pretty smile, and them glasses. (laughs) Uh oh. Yes. I fall in love too much. Watch out. Well, I mean, it's, well, you know, it. What's not what's not to fall in love with? Pretty smile, big booty, nice tits, and a great personality. Just watch the material. I am lovable. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, tell everybody where they can spend money on you. Lo- lovelunalark.com has all my links. You can find me on Twitter at LunalarkX. You can find me on Instagram at Love Luna Lark. You can find me on many vids under Luna Lark. You can find me on OnlyFans at Luna Lark. Uh, where else? You can find me on TikTok too, but you can't spend money there. My cash app is just Luna Lark. Mm. Yes. Yeah, see, we didn't even get to the TikTok and having a personal site versus just having the OnlyFans and all that. We're going to discuss that the next time we bring you on, baby girl. And the next time you come on, it will be for the premium smoke room where we're going to let her get even more nastier and more (laughs) candy and more raunchier with the conversation. So you guys subscribe for $4.99 a month, six premium podcasts, and you will get to hear Miss Luna Lark on there. So with that being said, Thank you for coming to the lounge, baby. It was my honor and my pleasure. Thank you for having me. No doubt. So with that being said, people, you know how we end this all day, every day. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience? You didn't learn anything. Tell everybody bye, Miss Luna. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Princess Havoc, your favorite BBW adult star and host of Causing Havoc, along with the fabulous Bobby Lucas where we talk about anything and everything. Come follow the dopamine with us Sundays at noon, now with video, part of the Premium Smoke Room family and streaming exclusively on Anchor and Spotify. Run, don't walk to subscribe now. For only $4.99 a month, you get my show and four other great shows as well. See you there. Mwah.